Okay. So, can you guys see the two blue knobs? That is where my fingers are. Can you guys see that? You can just nod. Um, yeah, we can see that. Okay, awesome. So, that should be... I turned on... Oh, that's weird. And I cropped it. Um, that should be where my um, fingers are going. And the thing that's important to see that is that I'm going to talk about them in a minute, but an infinite painter, what I like is that you use your pen. I have my Apple pencil here, my iPad, uh, 11 inch iPad pro. And I use the thing about infinite painter. I think it's different from other apps is that you use your finger to, um, let's say I have a, let's say any color. Okay. So here's my color wheel. I'm just going to use it to drag out and put here. Now I can draw anything and you can see here my layers on the right, right here. Okay. Now you can use this to increase the size. I'm using three fingers to drag up. So these are some technical things. I'm just going to get that out of the way. And you can use your three fingers to drag to the left to decrease the opacity. Therefore it becomes lighter, right? Decreasing the opacity makes it lighter and lighter. You can see how now you can barely see it because it's zero. Now I drag over, you can see the opacity increasing. And basically, those are basically the only two things that you pretty much need to know as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't want to pretty much make it more complicated than that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tone this with a toned, um, oh, if that can work, solid. Actually, that doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and start new. So what I did was I clicked this tool on the top. You can see right here, the fill bucket tool, okay? And I always like to tone my canvas when I start off first. I don't like working with a um, white canvas. It just sort of gives a nice warm tone. This is exactly how I started with gouache too. So, you know, for me, um, oh, thank you, Tia. Um, for me, um, uh, I, um, I like to, I like to start up with a slightly warmer tone because you get these sort of nice color temperature variations later on when you're um, doing your painting. Sorry, really quick. Can you guys all see the chat or is it just me? You guys can't see the chat, right? Okay. I just want to make sure. Um, it's okay if you do, I guess. Uh, let's see viewing options, maybe even make it bigger. Okay. Well, maybe not. Okay. Okay. So now the other really cool thing is that I can import a reference photo in, which is what I'm going to do. Okay. So you're going to go to here, import. And then I'm going to choose photos. Okay. So here I have that photo already downloaded. Now here you can choose layer or reference. Now, I, reference, layer is if you want to actually put it as a layer in your painting. And reference is what I'm going to do now because I don't want to paint on top of my photo. I just want to use it as a reference. This is a really cool thing that I like about Infinite Painter. It's almost like your pin board. I can put it anywhere I want. And now I have a reference. I can drag it with my fingers, larger and smaller. Pretty cool, right? I can see all your guys' faces, by the way. So you can see if you're paying attention. I'm just kidding. You guys can definitely play along as you're painting. It doesn't matter. Um, in fact, it might be good. I mean, it depends on your learning style. Maybe you want to listen first, paint later. It doesn't matter. Um, for me, I personally like to watch and soak it all in. So there, I can adjust my whole, it's sort of like your whole, what do you call it? Like your pin board? What do you call Like your bulletin board kind of thing. Okay. So now this is pretty much my setup. If I'm not doing plain air, if I'm doing plain air, I don't have reference photos. I, I put in. The other thing here, okay, right here is my navigator. Turn it off, turn it on. I love this thing. This thing is like, I need this because this is basically me being able to see as a thumbnail. I don't have to zoom in and out here. I can just look at this little thing right here, okay? So as I'm painting, it updates live. So anyways, let's get started. I have about an hour. Okay, so here, really quick layers, okay? So we can drag out here. You can see your layers one, two, and three. Okay, I, uh, for me personally, how I like to paint. Um, oh, if you don't have the horizontal toolbar, it should be um, somewhere. Crap, I can't remember how to get that. Remind me, um, I think it's Penny, no. Um, oh, oh, sorry, here really quick. Okay, so my toolbar, I've customized here. Thank you for Rosie for bringing that up. You can choose what you want in your toolbar. So I've chose 
fill, gradient, some of these I don't need, like ellipses I don't need. Um, perspective, you know, I like the flip. So you can choose your kind of customize your toolbar here. Okay, um, so to Rosie to answer your question, that's that. Um, so I've chosen here, this is the navigator. Actually, I'm not quite sure what these two circle and, and these are. But I don't really want to, ah, I want to click out of it. Um, this is the transform tool, okay? So let's say I put it, oh, and here are my brushes. Okay, I forgot about this. Okay, so I put my favorite brushes here. I didn't make any of these brushes. The, my grunge fill tool is my favorite brush. I started off Infinite Painter using this, and it's just here, and fills grunge fill tool. If you want to put it in your favorites, I think you just, let's see, you click here and you put a heart, but I don't want to heart that. So by grunge fill tool, you put heart and it ums up in your favorites, okay? Grunge fill tool and stucco and palette knife are probably my three favorite brushes. My grunge fill tool is used to make my shapes. Okay, so I love I, I build my paintings up by making shapes. Okay, and the grunge fill tool, and I'll just do a really quick abstract demo here. Okay, on a new layer, I can make shapes. Blah 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 blah. Let's just add a few colors here for variation. Make sure if I drag up, my opacity's up, the size is the biggest. Actually, it doesn't really matter because I love about the grunge fill tool is that you can literally drag any shape, any size, whatever you want. There's no boundaries. In Photoshop, it's a little different because you have the marquee tool. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Um, but I love this tool because it's basically free form, but it gives you a little bit of texture, which is awesome because who doesn't like a little bit of texture, right? However, if I wanna tone down my texture, the palette knife, okay, is what I have to do. And so in this case, you see how it's smudging and that is basically my smudge tool. That's the equivalent of me painting in gouache and I'm using some water and my flat brush to lose some edges, right? And edges is a really important thing to consider when you're painting in traditional or gouache. So basically these two tools is like my basis for building up pretty much any painting. If you look at all my paintings from 2019, 2020, pretty much these two tools. Um, this is the Suko brush. I love this brush for a little bit of texture. Look at that awesome stucco brush texture makes you have like a little just so beautiful right looks like ice cream or something um i've lately also loved this brush for drawing okay so i'm gonna let's do a new layer actually let's turn that off so here you can turn off my layers right so simple easy peasy now heavy paint's completely different because heavy paint doesn't have layers so that's gonna be fun okay I think the guy who made it is releasing a new one that will have layers, but personally, I actually like heavy paint for the fact that it doesn't have layers. So that's where it's gonna be super different. Okay, Proco pencil, basically like your typical drawing pencil. If I lay and hold my pen, sorry, if I lay and hold my pen like this, hold it like this, push it fat, it's almost like a charcoal pencil. But then I can use the tip of my pencil and get really nice thin lines, okay? So if you're new to Infinite Painter, I would suggest playing around with the brushes like that. Get, get a feel of what you like, what you don't like. Everyone has their different taste. For example, I actually personally don't super love, so you can see my favorites here. This is, a, oh no, that, not that brush, sorry. No wonder. This is pretty much simulating like gouache or oil. I actually personally don't love doing that on digital. That's my personal preference because I can do that in gouache and I find that it doesn't I have a little harder time manipulating it. But if you want, here are your options. They have filberts. Um, they have uh, watercolor brushes simulating. Um, Indian ink, old gouache, which is slightly different. Okay, so if you go here, you can go to watercolors, charks, charcoals, um, Guys, my hands are shaking. I don't know why. Um, I guess I'm nervous. Um, loaded brush, you know, just a few. You can see the different textures. Let me just go ahead and choose a different color. So you can see, right? Pretty fun. So your world has basically opened up, right? In the world of digital. However, learning to utilize them to your best advantage is going to be the hard part. But a good learning curve, right? So anyways, I'll just delete that. So if you want to delete, just double click here and click delete. Click on the layer, click delete, okay? Go ahead and delete this one too. So again, now I'm starting off with my tone. Okay, so um, this painting here, 
okay? I'm gonna start off with a new layer. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, go to my favorites, I'm gonna start off with my grunge fill tool. Now I like to have this color wheel open, okay? And you'll see in heavy paint, I work with a, con a completely different um, color box. I don't use a color wheel, I actually use the HSV. Um, so first, okay, now really quick backstory, what struck me about this painting, or this, sorry, this photo, I actually took this photo recently on a trip to Paso Robles, um, is that uh, I really just love the mountains and I actually really like that farmhouse. I took this actually while driving along the road, so it was like a quick snap out the window. Um, but, you know, really quick point, you know, you always want to choose something that inspires you to paint, right? Don't just paint something that doesn't inspire you because then it will show in the painting. So that's just, you know, one of my quick advices. Um, now, what I want to do with this painting is I actually want to ex um, play with this, the cropping and format a little bit more. And I definitely want to have a lower horizon line and uh, sort of emphasize the mountains and the smallness of that barn next to it. So let's get started. You can see here, I'm choosing my colors. Um, and right away, I'm using my grunge fill tool, okay? Now, I love about this tool, it's like you're literally sculpting. This is how I view painting. I feel like I'm a sculptor and I'm carving out my shapes. Um, and, 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 and because I can literally make any shape. You see, I'm constantly adjusting, but here I look at my little thumbnail, right? So my tool's handy. Oh my gosh, okay. I need to like have my hand stop shaking. This is embarrassing. I don't even shake this much when I was doing my gouache workshop. Okay. And you can see here, I can basically go all the way around. Another really cool trick um, that I'll just throw out now is that if I double click, here, I'll show my finger. If I double click right there, supposedly, and this is the value, so I've double clicked at the value here. If I move anywhere around this color wheel, it's gonna choose the same value, but a different hue. Does that make sense, guys? So let's say I did that, and I want the same value, but I want to have more warms. It's supposedly gonna choose the same value, but different hues. Does that make sense? Therefore, that's a really cool way to get really interesting color shifts and not have to worry about if your values are working or not. Can't do this in gouache though, right? Got a problem solve in gouache. So this is kind of a cheat. I don't usually use this cheat. I like to challenge myself to actually figure out if it's the right value or not by figuring it out, right? So anyways, yeah, that's just it. So you click out of it and then now it, it has undone that, okay? Um, I guess I should probably move this over so you can see my finger moving, even though I don't usually do that. I just do everything on my left. But right now I'm using my right hand to adjust and my left, I'm a left-handed person, so I'm gonna use my left hand to draw. Okay, another really cool thing is if you drag here, you see how I dragged from this, sorry, can't see again, here, and I drag here. Oh, that didn't work, sorry. Here, here, I'm color picking, okay? So I can color pick whatever color I wanted on my canvas, okay? I guess there's a lot more technical things that I didn't know, <laughs> but everyone following along, guys? Making sense? Thumbs up? Okay. Cool. I'm gonna shut up a little bit now and try to actually paint. <laughs> okay. So if you see me dragging, I'm dragging over, that's me color picking, okay? So that's too warm. I'm gonna start, oh wow, color pick the wrong color. That's what happens when you when you pick the wrong, wrong one. Now, in the beginning stages of my painting, okay, I just really wanna focus on slapping down the biggest shapes that I can and, and getting a readable image to the best of my ability. Okay, I'm not focused on details, not bogged down with that. That value is too dark there. Um, Oh, that's so weird. Oh, did I flip this? Why is this flipped? That's really weird. That's so weird. That's annoying. All right, well, that's weird. I don't know if you'd see it's flipped. I don't know why, but that's never happened before. Um, okay, so I'm mainly blocking out. So I'm just going to really quickly block out my, oops, that's too light. And you can see that I'm pretty much talking about values um, from the get-go. Now, I almost actually kind of wish that I 
extended this. That's okay. I'll work with what I have. I should have, sometimes I, sh I wish I should have um, started extended and then I can focus on cropping in later, but oh well. Okay. And here, I'm not too worried about color in the beginning. I'm just more worried about sort of finding some sort of a pattern and shape that actually this is good that it is flipped because a trick that you learn in digital classes is to flip your painting and I'd never do that enough oftentimes you when you flip your painting you can tell the incongruencies right um now here something that I want to do is that I want to really quickly situate my barn and you know what I think that is oh, that is the cropped version. is that the cropped version I don't think I imported the cropped version of my reference, kind of stupid of me. You can zoom in on your reference if you want, right? Let's hope that I can do a coherent painting in like about an hour. Sometimes it takes me faster, sometimes I can sit for a while. It just really all depends. Okay, so I'm just blocking that out there. Um, you can see here, I had an idea of how I want to organize this, but a lot of times I never plan these things ahead because I like to sort of develop that spontaneity um, that doesn't come when something is too pre-planned. And you have to let yourself discover these kinds of happy accidents, right? I'm um, just gonna push a little bit to the darker values here, maybe add some purples. Um, okay, so you can see live where my colors are. Um, and I'm aware that my trees look really unorganized right now. And I'm still trying to figure out a way. I think I wanna do maybe like a bigger set of trees here, just around my focal point of this house. Tiffany? Yeah. We can't see how you're choosing your brush shapes or sizes. Oh, um, my brush shape. I'm just dragging shapes on my canvas. That's about it. I'm, and then here, if you see me dragging up, I'm increasing the size and to the left, it's going to be decreasing in opacity. That's pretty much it. Um, but I guess, I guess it's only finger touch. So, I mean, unless I paint with my finger, you can see it right now you can see it um however it's a little different painting with a pencil the pencil gives you kind of more control over textures so i do i am going to use my apple pencil which i guess doesn't show the blue thing but you can see me putting down my strokes right guys so now you can see me zooming in and out is that okay yes or no okay um okay Let's see. Kind of wish I really cropped that. Okay. Hey, Tiffany. Um, sorry to interrupt. Just, just to clarify, I think people that are new to digital painting are kind of anticipating that the brush mechanism operates maybe like Photoshop, where there's a brush head shape. And um, but since you're using the fill tool. I think it's a very different sort of mechanism than people are used to. So maybe if you could show people just how you're making that fill stroke to, to get the shape of a tree, for example. So oh, you're, you're okay. Outlining, um, you're outlining kind of most of the shape, and then when you pick up, it sort of fills a straight line, and then whatever's enclosed gets filled. And maybe if, if you could Yeah, let me, let me on. try to paint. A, now can you see my finger like that? So basically, I'm painting my finger now. You can see I'm dragging. Oh, you know, I'm on the wrong brush. Um, Maybe I'll just go ahead and paint with my finger. That's what I'll do so you guys can see it better. Now, can you see me dragging the shape like that, right? Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah, so Infinite Painter won't show the brush. It's sort of like an invisible thing. Um, but but maybe maybe if I just do this, then then would that help you guys a little bit more? Let's, let's do that then. Um, I mean, I did actually paint on my finger for the first like First, oops, sometimes that will happen when I don't mean to. This bottom here is control Z. Okay, so the bottom arrow on the 
on the left. Yeah, let's just do that. I'll just paint with my finger. And you're basically just sort of uh, outlining the shape that you want to fill when you when you paint. Yeah, so, so I'm really just outlining. Yeah, so if I just do a new yeah. layer again, <clears throat> you know, like I'll, now I'll do it with my finger. You can see I'm just tracing and this fills any shape. I can make a triangle. It's like free form, right? So it's basically free form. Now you can see how I'm actually dragging. And that's basically what I'm doing here, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue to, now you can color pick here too. That's a really cool thing, right? So I was like, okay, let me see if my values, oh, can I color? Oh, selected, oh no, I guess I can't color pick. Never mind. <clears throat> Wait, can I? Actually, I'm not actually sure. Oh no, I can't color pick. I was just on the wrong layer. So now you can see how much darker that value is. And I personally wanna go, okay, I wanna make it lighter because I'm, I'm, I guess I'm pretty much lightening maybe the whole thing. So I can see, now I'm desaturating. I'm not gonna go too much into color. Gosh, this is really weird painting with my finger. I am not used to painting with my finger anymore. Um, now you can see, um, um, how hopefully I'm, I'm designing my shapes a little bit more. And I kinda wanna wish that I, oh, I can extend it. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's extend that a little bit. So I can extend this and then I can click transform and I can extend this here, right? And then here, if I wanted to, I could click this transform button here. Oh, never mind. Let's, let's not do that. Okay. Um, let's do that. So now I can color pick here and then I can continue to extend my shapes over, right? A little bit like that. So, you know, for you guys who work digitally, or sorry, traditionally, that <laughs> can't really do that, right? So these are sort of the the the, the cool, the really cool ways of, uh, I guess, digital painting that allows you to sort of explore freeform. Okay, so I'm still just bringing in my shapes. I'm just playing around with shapes right now, squinting. <clears throat> this flip thing is really throwing me off. Um, squinting to see all the time, zooming in and out. Um, just to see how everything is reading. Um, trying to get these subtleties and the uh, color temperature shifts with the purples and everything. This was pretty much painted on a pretty overcast day. Um, sorry, not painted, it was taken. I don't know if that value's gonna be way too dark. You can see that I actually tend to pick the wrong value the first time, most of the time. <laughs> it takes a lot of, um, a few tries for me to, to get the right value the right value that I feel like works. But I really just wanna get these subtleties. You know, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm a lefty and it's really annoying to reach over on the right side of my, my canvas. Now, the thing I like here is that I can carve into it, right? So I can use this sky to carve into it, to carve out. I can um, let's take a slightly lighter value here to sort of delineate the ground plane, okay? So with one tool, basically, I can really, I can get the gist of what I need personally, right? Now, again, this is my personal preference and everyone will find their own little niches along the way as they paint. Is this clear, guys? Is this, okay. I keep find, picking the wrong darker value. This is annoying me, okay. So a lot of times, this is how I start um, I will start. I almost want to pick a actually more desaturated, lighter value here and see if I can just pull out some of these structures. Now everything feels very graphic. I know I'm going to bring in the smudge palette tool in a, in a little bit to sort of now start to bring some edges and shapes together, but not yet. No, I don't like to do that too much in the beginning, but this, this is this pattern I missed, uh, sorry, not missed this pattern. I, coin is have developed a sort of, I, I like to call it the push and pull. You can see I'm dragging my shape in there. That's my opacity. Okay, my opacity is full. Um, adding some mountains in the back. Okay. Um, and you can see that I'm, I'm leaving some of the tone. And the, what I like about the grunge fill tool is that um, it lets it sort of lets you seep 
seep into the tone a little bit. All right, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to use my pencil a little bit to just get these smaller pills because I can't get that with my finger, unfortunately. So I'm back to my pencil now, okay? I'm just going to start creating these sort of shapes just to get that. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't do that in the detail just yet. Here, let's pick a slightly lighter value to start carving out you know, these sort of lighter edges. Now I'm thinking about shapes. I'm thinking about um, here, maybe we can add some smaller houses. Now, what am I thinking about when I'm doing these kinds of paintings? I'm thinking about grouping first and foremost. I don't like how my trees look yet. Um, I, I still need to work on that, but just thinking about I'm going to work on that in a second. Thinking about what I can group. I'm back to my pencil, guys, so I'm sorry if you can't see, but it's kind of really hard to get little things with your finger. Um, I actually started with a couple of still lifes. I didn't have an Apple Pencil when I started Infinite Painter, so I actually was used to painting with my finger more. But after switching to the Apple Pencil, it's like I kind of can't go back to the finger, so... Kind of weird how things work that way. So here I'm using this lighter value to carve back into my trees and make a sl and, oops, and make slightly more interesting shapes um, into the trees. Does that make sense? So this concept that I like to talk about, in instead of starting from the background to the foreground, I actually hardly never do that. I actually start with my biggest shapes first. I, and this is the same with any medium I paint on. These concepts I talk about are universal, um, personally for my workflow. Um, and, and I like to start with the biggest shapes that I see first, and then I create smaller, more, uh, sorry, I carve into that shape. Um, and I start trying to find interest and visual interest by putting into that shape. And that's pretty much how I paint trees like all the time. Um, I'm trying to find rhythm. I'm thinking about rhythm as well. Okay. So here because the grunge fill tool has a slight texture I've, I'm, I'm getting these really interesting why is it flipped oh no it's not flipped sorry I'm sorry I freaked out for a moment um <laughs> sorry <laughs> Mac like, um had a moment of see it's flipped oh no oh no okay never mind okay never mind I'm hallucinating okay um so this concept is something I can I um I, I administer, administer, I adhere to when, I, when I'm painting in gouache or digital. Okay, so now, you know, no, I really, I really don't like how my trees look like. Hold on. <laughs> Something needs to be, I think I need to push, I think I need to push some trees back. I'm very wary when everything's on the same plane. You kind of want to vary it, right? So this is sort of going into design. I'm going to see, that looks really weird. Okay, I'm going to see how I can create, I'm sort of thinking Ivan Earl. For those of you who don't know him, he's an amazing Disney illustrator back in the 1900s. One of my favorite illustrators. And I want to somehow connect these back a little bit more. I like the colors of my mountains, albeit I need to um, organize that a little bit more as well. So weird. I'm being thrown off by my flip screen. <laughs> It's like a brain workout for me. Okay. Um, I'm, and you can see that I'm squinting at my screen as well. All right, let's go back to my finger. Maybe I can get some more exciting strokes in my finger. Cut back in a little bit. You never know. <clears throat> um, okay. And maybe the other thing is, now I'm gonna show you, the thing about information here is that you can duplicate a layer, okay? So if I am like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, these changes I'm gonna make are gonna help or not. <clears throat> I can duplicate the layer, make changes on that, and then if I don't like it, I can just turn it on and off, right? So for the sake of showing you guys, I'm gonna duplicate it, and I'm going to use my palette knife tool, okay? Now, I know for a fat palette knife, it's not gonna have the same effect as my pencil, okay? Um, so I'm going to use my pencil for this, and you're just going to start seeing some edges being being lost, essentially, okay? So now I'm going to start merging shapes. I love the palette knife tool for that. 
um, because of that. Again, I can adjust the opacity. If I don't want it to be too much of a smudge, <clears throat> I can barely adjust it to that. If I want it to be 100%, let's say 77, I can adjust that. Size as well. You're dragging up for size and to the left and right for opacity. Okay, think of opacity as a thickness of your paint. You know, how much water or how much solvent you're mixing in, right? If you do gouache or oils, pretty much the equivalent of that. Watercolor, right? Tea, I know you make your amazing watercolors. It's as, you know, more water you make, the more translucent it's going to be. Pretty much the same with digital. But you know that already. You work at Pixar. Okay, so here I'm going to start smudging. Um, and sometimes what I like to do... <clears throat> is I like to almost smudge everything. Like I'll just go crazy. And I actually learned this, um, well, I didn't go to his workshop, but my friend told me he went to Ruel Lee's workshop, which, and what he told me blew my mind. He said that what Ruel Lee will do, for the, those of you guys who don't know Ruel Lee, I'll type him in the chat. Um, Okay, so he does these amazing beach paintings or wave paintings, land uh, seascape paintings, and he will, um, and he will after a, a oil painting session, he'll basically take a palette knife and scrape off all his work, you know, and and at first I was like, why would he do that? But now I understand it's almost stepping back and seeing what you can lose and what you can bring back. And you almost need to do that in order to advance forward. So this is what I equate that to. I equate this, my, my smudging. Um, that's pretty much the same mindset that I have. So um, in this case, I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> sorry guys, I'm not going to smudge everything, but sometimes you have to overwork the painting in order to know what you need to bring back, right? If you're always going to stay in the safe zone, you're never going to know uh, what what exactly you can push and pull to new bounds, okay? So um, you can see everything is a little soft. I might bring the sky into a little bit for dynamic effect. Okay, that's too much. So that's okay. Good thing about digital is that you can control Z, right? Don't rely on it too much though. So now you can see some of that tone. Okay, it's there. And now I'm like, okay, now I'm getting some moody things with some sky that maybe aren't in the reference, but I have discovered through pushing and pulling, right? Um, so now I can bring my brush side smaller. You can see my three fingers dragging down. Just smudging a little bit more, maybe bring some trees back in. Now I'm gonna start bringing the stucco brush, which is something I really like. That looks really weird on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna bring back some hard edges in a moment, but this brush, I'm just gonna show you is another brush that I really, really like, but sparingly as well, okay? So I'm using my finger, oh, see, it's not the same with the finger. Sorry, I have to use my pen with this because it's just not the same effect with the finger. It creates really weird sort of strokes. Um, this brush I really like to just throw in a little bit of texture, right? Can you see that, what just happened there? Um, here, what I can do is also just bring in some of that, that harder edge back right there I don't like my barn right now. I definitely need to fix that um, and fix this, maybe the shape of my mountain. But um, I like to use this sparingly. Oh, this one, you can see the brush. I think they actually might have recently changed that. Okay. So here now I'm just utilizing texture just to, oops, wrong value. Lighter. Just to you, just to throw in some some various interest. Now something really cool that let me fix that first. Um, actually, I'm starting to now. Every time I add this kind of stuff, I want to make sure that the overall readability of my painting is still being kept. So if I feel like some of my edges are too um, uh, soft, I'm gonna go back to the grunge fill tool and and bring in some of that uh, hardness, which I'm gonna do in a second, I think. Um, something about this part that's really annoying me, the way the barn is sitting on this ground. So I'm just gonna somehow, I gotta maybe go back to the palette knife fill tool. Sorry, not palette, palette knife. And maybe I just wanna just, just figure out how that edge of this barn meets the ground, right? Don't want something too hard. It might look a little bit like a Lego sitting 
on the ground, you know, so I want to pay attention to that, right? Um, now I'm, I'm zooming out. I'm like, all right, there's some edges I want to bring back. So I'm going to go back to my grunge fill tool now. I literally just alternate between these three brushes. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, someone asked where the grunge fill tool is. Um, I don't use a smudge tool, guys. My smudge tool is a palette knife tool, okay? I don't actually, this is the smudge tool right here. I don't actually use that ever. I use my palette knife. My palette knife right here, this brush here, is my acts as my smudge. The grunge, the stucco is my added texture. And the grunge fill tool is my, like my shape based lay-in tool. So grunge fill tool again, go to fills down here, right there. There's also solid, there's different kinds, right? I chose this one. You have debris, which is kind of similar. You have a solid fill, which basically gives you a complete solid fill, no texture whatsoever. Sometimes this can be really helpful when you want really graphic shapes and you don't want any texture, okay? The third tool was I talked about was the grunge fill tool. So here, um, let's say I just want some slightly more um, graphic shapes. This is the this is the the solid fill tool, but I don't really use a solid fill tool too much. Um, so again, let's just review, okay? Fill tool right here. You you guys see right here, all right here, right? Go down to fill. That's where your grunge fill tool is, okay? Where's, um, I'm not exactly sure, paint, I think that's where it was. Okay, paint, you can find the palette knife tool right here under paint, okay? So there's different categories. They've already built in these brushes for you. When you buy it, it comes with all these brushes. You can play around as much as you want, see which one, and there's actually ways you can minutely adjust um, um, the, um, the amount of texture and everything that you want. Uh, I'm not, I actually don't do that too much, but I'll show you a little bit. I don't want to get too technical because I don't even really know how to use it. Um, palette knife is under paint. Okay. So paint again, scroll down, scroll down. There's a ton. I pretty much use palette knife and stucco. So the other two brushes I use are under paint, palette knife, stucco. Got it? All right. Someone just asked me where the palette tool is and I just covered that. So I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> okay. So palette knife again is in paint. Unless there's a lag, then I'm sorry about that. Paint palette knife, okay? If you want to, let's say you really like this certain brush, how you put it in your favorites is that you heart it right there. So you see where I just clicked heart? Once you heart it, it's going to go into your favorites. You can drag and rearrange like this, okay? So let's say my top brushes are grunge fill tool, palette knife in order and stucco brush. So I don't even have to search for it. I can just go on my top three and la yada yada, they're right there, right? Pretty handy. Um, these are other ones that I use sometimes, barely, but I just added them so I don't have to keep looking for them. But honestly, these are the three brushes that I use. Make sense? Pretty cool, right? So, um, okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to the painting about uh, maybe 25 minutes left. So, <clears throat> I want to get as much done um, as I can. Um, I kind of like these are kind of cool shape. Um, you know, actually, I'm just going to demo for the sake of it. I might just add solid fill. I kind of like how that looks. So I'm going to add solid fill to my hearts. And then if I'm going to add to my favorites, it's going to go. Oh, hold on. Where did it go? That's strange. <clears throat> Maybe let's add that again. Maybe now. Oh, it's this one. Oh, I don't know what happened. That's so weird. Hmm. Sorry, guys. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. So it's all the way on the bottom. Drag it up, drag it up. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. Whoa, don't want to share that. Okay, here. I have too many brushes apparently. Oh, yeah, this isn't my favorites. Okay. I'm just doing it slowly so I don't mess up anything. Okay, so now I have my four brushes on the top. 
And now I'm just going to use a solid fill just to demonstrate a little bit. Okay, so let's say I wanted to harden, you know, get some harder edges. You know, how can I play around with that, right? Get some nice graphic shapes just for the fun of it. Some of these things are more for the sake of demo. And let's say I like, okay, I want to soften that edge a little bit. I'm taking my palette knife and now, right, again, palette knife here, right? And then I'm smudging upward. You can smudge. It's just not the same with a pencil, without a pencil. So I just use my finger. <clears throat> you can see the difference between that. And now you can actually get a lot more subtlety with the pencil. Just throwing that out there. Um, something like that. Right now it really looks like it's being pushed in the mist and stuff like that. Um, now, again, I'm going to go back to the whole concept of sort of starting to push, push some air into some of these things to create the feeling of um, of air in your painting, right? So I just want to break up some of these shapes a little bit. Um, maybe going to some more desaturated greens, pairing maybe not too light. I'm not going to go too much into color since this is a crash course workshop. We could probably talk about color for another four hours. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to maybe lighten up but this is when I start pretty much slowing down this is a process where I could really slow down and I could really delve into you know certain areas and really think about edges you know where I want a hard edge where I want the, the smudge of my energy going um, uh, and I love this grunge fill tool because again it is just um, it lets me get as many tiny shapes as I want. So you see here, you can see my finger now. I can make really tiny shapes or really big shapes, right? So I can really start zoning in and I'm controlling Z right now. Um, and I'm using my pencil, guys. So just in case you're wondering why you can't see exactly, I'm, I'm using my pencil. I almost kind of want to get some harder shapes here. I want to play around with sort of getting the feel of bushes and and tree. So after I've smudged, I'm bringing back some harder edges, right? I, I love playing with soft and hard edges and exploring this sort of graphic shape language that I can put down right there, maybe playing with a slightly harder edge there. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why this is flipped on the top. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't, I don't know how to flip it back. So that's something I'm going to have to play around with. Um, so here, now I want to just play with that subtlety. I also want to, um, I think I'm going to start working on my trees a little bit more. Start refining. I, I kind of have this idea of wanting to get these really cool layered um, trees that will sort of lead your eye up and around the mountain. But... Sometimes it takes a while for my brain to actually figure out what shapes that I want. <laughs> so it's always just experimentation for me. Oops, that's a little bit too. I'm going to push this. Yeah, this area I really don't like. So I'm actually going to push it to the greens. I'm just, I think this is, I want to just push a slightly warmer, um, warmer green okay just to sort of carve out some of those um here maybe i just want to group these shapes maybe to be a little bit okay to be honest sometimes i'm aware of my shapes when i'm putting it down i i don't really have a plan i i, I put down things and i have to see if it works when i put it down i'm not that i can visualize but then for shapes and things that confuse me like rocks and bushes um, i'm not very good at organizing it in my brain sometimes i have to just see how certain things go and, and then i go aha maybe i've discovered something and then i can sort of move off of that um so i'm just trying to imply Okay, uh, a few more things. And again, I'm working from big to small. I'm working, um, you see, you can see here I'm color picking. So I just color pick that. And like, let's say I'm like, okay, I want some of that color, you know, here. I'm dragging and I'm pushing, you know, that here like that. Um, maybe I want a harder edge here. So I'm going to drag here and I'm going to just put a harder edge right there. 
maybe think about putting some edges there as well. Um, yeah, I almost feel like I need to open up some space here. Just something is really bothering me right there. Um, and I'll probably figure this out off camera <laughs> um, and figure out how to, how to better design. Oops, that's a little bit too light. So that was a little too light there. And I'm also really aware that these two, these are equally spaced. So I got to fix that, right? Kind of a design thing. Um, so I'm just going to lower the value a little bit to maybe uh, offset that. And you can see here, I'm just, I'm not really painting houses at all. I'm actually trying, just trying to imply most things. Um, would like to push maybe the warmness a little bit. So this is where I like to push. And I think maybe I'll open some examples as well of previous paintings that I've done so I can also show you how I arrange my layers, okay? Um, so here, for example, I put down a harsher, uh, more harder edge. Maybe I wanna push it to the purples a little bit. Um, that's a little too light. Okay, so just adding a few variations. Something about the edge control is bothering me here too. So I think I, I just want to bring a slightly harder edge, slightly, um, you know, depending on how graphic I want to. Something about this mountain tip is bothering me. A little, just make it a little bit more maybe play with some structural shapes. Um, so anyways, going back here, you know, I can add these shapes and then what I'll do is I'll go back to the palette knife tool, right? So here, and then I will smudge a little bit and just bring those shapes together a little bit. And I go, okay, now I want to bring back some green. Oops. So I'll go back to my grudge, um, stucco or grunge. Okay. And I'll bring back some shapes. Now this is pretty much my method. Um, going back and forth kind of like that. No really, no no magic tricks really. Um, back and forth, back and forth until I find a happy, oh, my screen just went a little bit darker, until I find a happy um, medium that I like. Um, here maybe I want to think that I want to bring back some of that edge just a little bit. Here I know I need to figure out, and I say here and I just drew a whole shape. <laughs> So maybe I can maybe I can show you what I mean with a Proco pencil on a new layer. I need to work on, well, let's see, here, here right? I wanna work on that a little bit more, it's two parallels, maybe work on the shapes more a little bit here. Okay, so it's constantly building up. I can turn that layer off and there's that. Um, there's a lot of, I'll, I'll show you a couple more tools too. Um, Oh, if I double click the thumbnail, oh my gosh, thank you so much, Nizu. Okay, I learned something from you. Okay, look at that, guys. Apparently you can flip it like that. Hmm, which one looks better? I don't know. Something looks empty here now that I see that. I need to, I need to, I need to add those houses there. That's what I need to do. Okay, so I'm on Proco Pencil. Let's just try drawing with a pencil just for sake of demo, okay? I'm dragging up. This pencil tends to be very, like, thin. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, maybe I'll work on a new layer just to, you know. And I like this pencil because it's almost like drawing. And I can sort of get these kind of cool illustrative marks that uh, like sometimes I'll, I'll show you. So I'm just implying some stuff here and maybe here what I can do is I can you know maybe draw out some places and actually I, I actually just just recently started playing around with this brush more so um I'm still more in a happy place with um my grunge feel too yeah that's a Proco pencil so Proco pencil I think it's pencils right there. So pencils, Proco pencil. Look at all these different pens you can play with, right? So it's it's really, again, it's up to you. Um, but I can get some really expressive lines, right? Um, maybe if I wanted to just, you know, sort of 
contour a little bit, right? You can play with some energetic lines like that. Maybe I want to scribble some hay. I don't know. Um, maybe I want to scribble some bushes here. Depends on the look you want, right? Um, I've sort of lately been going for a more illustrative look uh, with these. So you can see here, I'm just, I'm going like this with my pencil. It's so light though, you can't see it. Uh, the, this pencil is really subtle. Um, here, I kind of like it when I want to um, just mitigate some some values and also create like a sort of sort of energetic energy with some sketch lines, right? Um, so just sort of maybe like this. Maybe I want to add, bring some of that neutral gray in and just scribble, well, scribble smartly, right? Bring in some 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 variation there. Okay, maybe some there as well. So I'm maybe here. I want to go back to my favorites, and I want to smudge. Okay, here's another thing I can teach you guys. So let's say I'm like, okay, I don't like working on different layers. I want to work on all one layer. I'm duplicating this just again. I can have my different progressions and show you. I'm gonna take this layer up top, click on it, and click merge. Now you've merged these layers together. I can toggle on and off. So now I can take this and I can smudge down here a little bit because now it's all one layer, right? So I can smudge and play with different edge variation right there. Making sense, guys? All right. You're welcome, Ashley. I don't know what I said that. Um, okay. Um, here is just so badly designed, right? All those houses look like polka dots or something. I don't know. So that's something I need to fix. Um, that's a design aspect. So maybe I'll just go back to Proco, maybe group a little bit more, right? Um, figure that out. Maybe add some some interest and in some 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 lines or something going off into the distance. Maybe even add some tree branches, you know, just to add some some light on dark variation. Maybe not that that light. I probably should have done this on a on a new layer to be honest, because sometimes I don't like that. Um, here, maybe I can just tone down the value just a little bit. Um, maybe just and there's just so such a variety of things you can start to almost again sculpt right um you can see here i'm drawing um and even if i demo with my finger which I'm doing now. It's it's such a light with a Proco pencil. Without the pencil, you you don't have touch sensitivity, so you can't get the different thickness in lines. So with my pencil, you see I can get thicker and I can get smaller, right? But with your finger, you can't do that. Okay, so that's why in the end I just have to do that because I want to get these sort of thicker thicker lines, and you can see you can get start to get really really expressive um, and stuff. There's still a lot of things I would like to fix. Um, here as well, maybe creating a really, so I'm holding my pencil like this and maybe what I wanna do is create a really expressive line going like this and coming down, right? So um, thinking about rhythm, Right? So the Proco pencil is almost like a charcoal pencil. Okay, so if I were to, again, just demo on a new layer, again, I'm holding my pencil like this, like you would a charcoal pencil. You, you, you know, you guys hold it, press it down, or I can hold it like this, and then I can get really thin edges just to demo again. So right now what I'm doing is I'm holding it like this to get really thick, thick edges. Um, um, Another cool thing you can do, okay? Uh, Infinite Painter is really powerful. You can actually build 3D models and build 3D like, um, oh, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, make sure you're painting on a layer that's visible, okay? So if you paint on a layer like this and it's not visible, you see the eye with the cross on it, you're not gonna be able to paint on it because it's not visible. So if you're like, why is my paint not coming on? It might be because you are painting 
on a non-visible layer. So just a quick note about that. You know, it's not that the app is broken. <laughs> Probably not. So, um, oops, I'm painting on an invisible layer again. So it wasn't working. Switch back to that. You know, I can even get, you know, some, I'm just sort of scribbling right now, to be honest. Um, pushing down that. Now another really cool thing, okay. Um, so you, now you can see my process. So we can go from here you can see where we build up from, right? And then if you toggle again through layers, you can see how we've sort of been building up this painting. A lot of times what I like to do is I like to take different um, versions of different layers. And I haven't really figured out an easier way to do this, but I, let, I erase some layers to show the bottom layers. Um, so let's say sometimes I'm like, okay, I like some of this part better, but then I like some of the aspects. I'll duplicate this layer just so I have a copy of it. I'll turn it off. And then I'll use a eraser tool right here. And a eraser tool also comes, you can also customize. So here, okay. And I'll start erasing some parts of this so that it starts showing onto the, the previous layer. So it's like you start having the best of both worlds kind of deal. So you can see the difference in toggling back and forth. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Um, um, Another thing I wanted to show is, um, let's say we merge that. Okay, so let's duplicate this again. Just I'm just duplicating it to show you different versions in the end. Another really um, cool trick you can do is to take the transform tool up here. Okay, so this is the transform tool, the one that looks like a cross. I'll do it again. Right there. You can select... Oh, no, that didn't work. Okay. You can move the painting around, make it lower, expand it. If you want to zoom up. Okay, so let's say I'm like, I actually want a cropped version of this. I can do that. I can do that. Or you can zoom out to the original or click cancel. None of your changes will be saved. Maybe I want to zoom in just a little bit. Maybe not actually. Okay. Um, what I wanted to do and show you was take the lasso tool, okay? So another really cool trick is, and I'll do it again, right here, the last place I have here, and again, you can click here, and I think you can find the lasso tool right here. So it's under edit, okay? So if you wanna customize your toolbar, this is the create tab, this is, I guess you can create things. The select, it's under edit, so it's under select, transform, edit, you can again, if I clicked here, I would select, I could add that into my toolbox. So right in here, this pin triangle looking thing, click edit. And I think you drag up here to add to your toolbox. If I can't quite remember, I think that's how you do it. I actually can't remember how to add it to your toolbox. I'll need to look that up. The last tool I have here is the lasso tool, okay? So let's say I wanted to move my mountain and distort it a little bit. I'm gonna select, oh, didn't work. I'm gonna select and drag my finger, however big you want it. Then I'm going to copy merge. So now I actually have a new layer right here. Can you see where it copy and merged it? Now I can transform and I can skew this. If you go here, there's basic, which is basically just making it bigger and smaller. If I go warp, uh, maybe let's go distort. You can change it and skew it however you want, right? So if you wanna shift something over, now this might be too complex for some of you guys, it's okay, you don't need to, you don't need to do any of this. I don't do this with it, most of my paintings. Um, you know, you can make it lower, you can, you know, and then continue to paint on top of it. So maybe I'm like, okay, I want it more like this. I want it maybe taller. I want it to be expanded and cut off. Um, obviously you can see the edge is going to be, need to be fixed there, right? So variety of things, warping lets you move it like water a little bit more. So this is really handy for some things. Okay. But I don't really want to do that. So again, X and you can turn off this layer right here. If you don't want that layer, I haven't affected my original one, which is still right here. Okay. So the thing about doing it on a new layer is that you can play with these different sort of warps and not have it affect your other painting, right? Um, 
I'm working on an 11 inch iPad Pro. All right, so a um, couple more minutes here. Okay, so just gonna keep painting on a new layer. Okay, and again, usually what I do is I end up merging all these layers. Um, I'm gonna select my grunge fill tool and I'm just going to continue to um, sort of just maybe flesh out some areas a little bit more. It's too dark, too light. And you can see I'm just basically dragging my brush into like a circle. Oh, that's not working. Why is that not working? It's not working. Oh, because I have this layer here. Oops, I gotta control Z. So I thought it wasn't working because I had this layer covering it. So I wanted to turn this off so that I can work on the layer below it, right? I want to turn this layer off, turn it off. And now I can work on this layer and I can actually see what I'm working on before it was on top of it. So I couldn't see. Um, so I'm just playing around now with um, adding and canoodling, but you know, this could take me probably another couple of hours um, and to really call it finished, right? But at least I have a pretty solid block in that I can feel a little bit more confident to work off of, right? Um, you know, there's still some shapes of some trees that I'd like to refine. Um, maybe if I wanna, again, bring the stucco brush in and I'm dragging over here to color pick, and then I'm just going to sort of add some texture onto some of these trees to just give that feel of trees. <laughs> Um, maybe here I want to just uh, break in a little bit there. Maybe break up the shape a little bit there. Okay. Um, a little bit more. And I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? It's up to you to how much you want to play. Uh, you know, here you can also kind of do really cool lines, honestly, with the, with the stucco brush. I'm on the stucco brush right now. That was a little bit too much of a line, so I want to do that. Um, but the whole time I'm adding this, I just want to make sure, you know, actually, this is a good idea. Um, I think I want to move my barn over. So let's say I'm like, man, I want to move my barn over. I'm just going to merge this really quick. Um, let's see how we can do that again. Let me do this with my finger so you can see. Lasso. Lasso my barn. Click here, copy merge on the bottom. Therefore, you're making it on a new layer. Maybe zoom in. Oh, oops, I didn't want to do that. Now I just want it basic. Now I can move it anywhere I want. Pretty cool, right? So let's say I'm like, oh, I really want it right there. Maybe that feels a little bit better. Um, let's just try that. So then I can go here and then I go on a new layer just to paint this part out, right? And I just paint like I would traditionally and paint that out. And I've moved my barn a little bit more to the center. Make sense? All right, so first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tone, I always do this. I tone my canvas. Depending on the amount of jitter, I usually tone it a warm and I get already all these color variations. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's make it really big, just so I cover a lot. I do this really quickly, no method at all. I just cover it up. If you want, you can add different textures and have fun, maybe bring it to the yellows and add that. You know, have a fun base to work off of. That is what um, I would suggest to play around with. Well, that's kind of annoying because, okay, what I have to do is make this smaller because apparently it'll cover it up a little bit. Okay, can you guys see my preview screen? Actually, I technically don't need to see my preview screen. If you guys have the reference picture open, I think I'm going to stop share. Ah, whatever. Okay, that, that works. Okay. Um, okay, so I've told my canvas. Actually, how do I zoom out on this? I don't know how to zoom out on this. I guess that's kind of an annoying thing. Um, 
I can't remember if I can do that on, oh, and these arrow buttons are undo. So undo or go forward. Um, so I guess I, I actually don't know if there's a way to zoom out on Infinite Painter. You know, you can pinch your fingers and go in and out. Um, I'm actually not sure quite how to do this on the desktop. Actually, this is my first painting I've ever done on the desktop. So let's see how it goes. Um, I'll just have to like, zoom back and squint at my painting that's what i'll do so let's start okay so again i'm going to start off with the biggest shapes and i usually like to start off with my um mountain right so i'm picking the hue i'm desaturating it because this whole painting is composed of neutral grays which i personally really love oh oops wrong tool i'm like okay let me adjust it a little bit smaller and to be honest, I just start haphazardly throwing things on. <laughs> Again, I like to start chaotically and then I and then I zone in. I like to look holistically and think of it as a funnel as you're working large to small, right? It's always good to be able to see the bigger picture of things. Um, here, I know I'm just shifting over to the green blues, right? So I think of it in terms of that way. And now that's how, because I've trained my eye to be able to... Um, Kind of know how colors will work together right um i kind of more or less know if i keep desaturating it it's going to just sing against these more um slightly more saturated blues i'm gonna adjust those blues a little bit and this is oops sorry i don't know what i'm doing i didn't want it that light um oops too dark okay so again too dark i'm adjusting the bottom value which is bar which is value right so value i'm gonna get slightly and i'm like okay i want a little bit more to the greens Maybe here, and I'm going to light. You can see the color changing here. So if you're not sure what color you're choosing, that's the color you're choosing. Um, oops. And to be honest, I start off super rough in the beginning. Okay. Um, so like three-fourths of the painting are like, what is going on, Tiffany? Hopefully you can still see the readability. Um, and it really bothers me that I can't zoom out. I'm gonna have to ask Vong. Um, I think I'm just missing something. I feel like I'm, I wonder if I go here to resize and size multiplier. Let's do that, let's just do that. Okay, oh, nope, that didn't work. Did that work? I have no idea. Oh well, okay. Hold on, let me just play around really quick. I don't know if that, I don't want it too much. No, it didn't adjust that. If I make it too big, it's gonna start freezing, so. Um, color pick, E, choose this blue. Now I'm like, okay, I wanna shift it a little bit over to the purples, a little bit more desaturated and a little bit darker, even more desaturated, even a little bit darker. So I, oops, too dark, okay. See, sometimes I don't even know until I try. Okay, so now I start uh, lightening up a little bit. And you can see how I'm adjusting pretty much like that. And because I have slight jitter, it's kind of cheating and giving me those slight variations already. Right? Make sense? Okay. Now I'm like, okay. Maybe now I can play with, I think I, I see a way to, I want to desaturate this a little bit. Now when you're desaturating, you're essentially adding white. So I also need to darken the value a little bit if if I want it to be a little um, darker in value. I'm gonna push it over to the blues just a little bit. All right? Um, maybe darken the value, maybe saturate it a little bit. I don't know, I have to see. And I can also play with the, um, definitely play with the um, circle tool. So maybe what I'll do here is like, okay, I'm gonna play a little bit around the circle tool and just see if I can get some shape and different noise. I basically look at this app as painting and controlling the different textures and noise you have without having it be too overwhelming, right? Um, I don't wanna have circles everywhere. Sometimes I just like to have one circle. So I'll do the one circle and I'll draw it bigger and just control my shape, my, my uniqueness of my shapes, right? Got that from Kwang Ho. He said that once where all your shapes should be unique. And I was like, oh my God, that's brilliant. Um, and so I've been thinking about that more ever since. Um, here, you know, you can see it's giving me that slight variation, okay? Um, so I'm like, all right, let's just move on to something else. I'm already detailing too much, in my opinion, at the too much at the beginning. I want to get more. Um, just to get a head start, maybe I'll color pick here. Oops. 
you just click. So you click on the E and you just click wherever you want it. I'm gonna lighten and desaturate and enlarge my brush just so I can block in a little bit more of the sky more, okay? So let's do that. Let's say I wanted to fill it even faster. Maybe I can use the fill tool, okay? Just to get more areas and you can start to see how you can really start carving in again. Again, I look at this all as carving. It's so fun to think of yourself as a sculptor, right? And kind of, and kind of really see, okay, how am I carving into my shapes and how am I bringing out light, uh, light and dark shapes simultaneously, right? I always like to teach that the light doesn't exist without the dark and the dark doesn't exist without the light. When you're carving out light shapes, you're also carving out your darker shadow shapes. And that's why I was, I don't paint foreground to midground. I paint um, my darkest masses first and I work around that because then that helps me anchor my painting a little bit faster. Um, okay, so let's pick, a, let's work on the ground a little bit, right? So let's say, I actually really like to fill in my ground with a fill tool. So. Um, again, saturating, saturating, but I don't want that. So I'm just going to push it a little bit over like that and see what we get there. Okay. Maybe go back to the line. Maybe push it to the greens, push up the saturation. And you can even draw a diagonal line, right? Who says you have to draw straight lines all the time? Guys, I really have to squint because I'm not seeing it's I usually actually paint really small, so this is I'm not used to this. I'm used to painting on my iPad most of the time. Um but what happened was I tested this out yesterday and actually the iPad version doesn't let you stream and it wasn't showing the screen. So I was like, Bong, what do I do? And he and thankfully I had to download the newer version. Okay, so now here. Um I love the fill tool for um, creating trees. Uh, so I'm gonna show you really quick how I do that. It's the same as a grunge fill tool, except a slightly different texture. And I want you to note how the same concepts though carry through, okay? That's what I want you guys to kind of pay attention to is that it's not, I'm not trying to get you to be bogged down by all the different kinds of technical stuff. They're just as a means to an end. The end should be your painting, the story you want to tell, you know, a message you want to, you want to share. So, um, so obviously I have to explain the technical aspect, but in the end, don't get caught up in textures so much as a distraction to the overall intention of your painting, right? Um, so I'm just adding that. Um, maybe what I could do is add, I'm trying to think about the best way, right? So it's almost like problem solving as well. What's the best way? And you can see how small I have my picture. I, I actually paint this way. I never zoom in on my reference because it's the equivalent of squinting. It's like doing the squinting for me. If you're painting in plein air, you best bet you should probably squint all the time while you're painting, almost all the time. You know, once had a friend told me, you, if you're if you want to be a painter, you shouldn't be afraid of getting eye wrinkles because squinting is pretty much your best and easiest tip. That's the people always ask me, how do you group and how do you get simplification? And I just have one answer for them: it's squinting. That's it. Squinting and step away from your painting, toss it on the ground, or step away from your screen. Take a twenty minute break. I guarantee you, come back, you'll see things that you didn't know before. Guarantee, foolproof. Um, unless I don't know, you're blind unless you really don't wanna see something wrong with your painting, then you won't see anything wrong with your painting. But if you really desperately wanna get better, you will always see something to improve in your paintings, right? So sometimes the easiest tricks are, the best tricks are the easiest tricks. Sometimes there's a time to overwork your painting so you can learn what to not step back on. And sometimes there's a time to, to dial back. Oh, I keep doing the thing where I'm dragging, I'm used to heavy paint or infinite painter. So I meant to color pick that. Nope, didn't mean to do that. So let's color pick this. Nope, didn't mean to do that. Just trying to color pick slightly. Okay. Um, what was I gonna do? I can't remember. Uh, let's maybe add a mountain in the back. A lot of times I'll color pick once I have my basic values in. 
but I'll really try to challenge myself to not color pick and to see how much I can get the right value in. That's too much texture there. So I almost want to be like, eh, you know, let me dial down the jitter. Let me just have some simple block in shapes for the back more, right? So I'm not just putting down texture for the sake of texture. <clears throat> And you're probably thinking, damn, this is super clunky. Like, I don't think I like this. You'll probably think that at first, but it just gets him getting used to, um, you know, and maybe this app isn't for you. You know, it's not a must that you have to paint in this app. Everyone's brain is different. I hated this app the first time I, first couple of times I did it. it took me like one and a half hours to do two oranges, um, which usually takes me like 20 minutes. So I think the jitter is too much. So I'm just gonna try to consolidate a little bit more. And just for the fun of it, I'll show you some other tools. So we have um, the rectangle tool, okay, which is which is basically rectangles. Oh, wait, oh, I didn't choose it. Okay, rectangle R. So you can't adjust the angle in this one, okay? A little bit more limiting in my opinion, but some people swear by it, you know? And, um, and again, it's up to you. So maybe I'm like, I just need to group some shapes more. Let me just do that. This is, goes into more pixel art to me, so um, I just sort of stray away from that. Anyways, I'm gonna learn that. Now I'm like, okay, let me just see if I can just bring some stuff together. I'm gonna bring, I like using the really big smudge tool. Oh, this is the size, I'm sorry, this is the jitter. It's flipped on the app. So now I can maybe start bringing, smudging some tools, or sorry, smudging some um, shapes, right? I technically don't like to work too small, okay? Um, with the smudge tool, you can see it's smudging some of the, the white, so I don't want that. So this is Control-Z. Let's bring it in a little bit smaller. Don't know why it's doing that, to be honest. It's taking the color here and bringing it in. I'm totally aware I need to design this part more. It's still lacking, but I move a lot slower when I demo because I'm talking at the same time. Um, I want to somehow, I like that pattern there. I want to somehow maximize on that. So here, what I really like is I really like, let's see if I can draw, that'd be pretty cool. I can do it, can you guys see the preview? I like this part here, and I wanna sort of imitate that pattern. Uh, okay, clear. Okay. Oh, wow, that's weird, how do I end this? Oh no, clear, okay, I don't really like that tool, okay. Oops. A large part is just gonna be experimentation, putting down shapes and finding how they work with each other, right? How they're existing within each other and sometimes finding those happy sometimes happy unintentional accidents. Um, I'm using the CR tool right now, which gives me continuous. So it's just sort of a faster way to do that. Um, although it's being a little bit laggy right now, so I might have to reduce the size just a little bit. Let's just reduce it a little bit, okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and block in my barn really quick. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bring it over to the purples and reds, maybe more towards the reds. Make sure I get a, you see how I'm adjusting here and I'm thinking, actively thinking, is that the correct value? So this one's it's nice for you guys, right? Cause you can definitely see the cursor, which I know Infinite Painter, you couldn't quite see it. So. Now the houses are gonna might look a little wonky. It might be a little bit hard for you at first to get those shapes that you want, but that's okay. Sometimes those wonky shapes is what's really fun to play with. Um, the one thing that I personally find that I have a hard time doing is getting really light shapes um, to, to sort of start singing. Now you can see I'm already shortcutting a little bit. I'm just trying to get 
a little bit of variation within the rooftop itself, color, color shift variations. Um, and the, and I think you can actually control Z on this, but, um, or not control Z. I'm not sure if you can actually adjust and transform and shift, which is why you, for me, when I do these, it's almost like if I messed up a little bit on composition or something, it's like, I basically have to repaint over it and basically shift everything. And that's when sometimes I will just go into Photoshop and fix it because it's faster. Um, but three fourths of the work is pretty much, oops, pretty much done. Maybe here I can use the line tool, right, as well to adjust different thickness and get the implication of houses. I'm never rendering on these apps. Um, I'm always trying to get, because I use these apps mainly for plain air. I'm, um, I am, I'm never thinking about rendering as much as I'm thinking about shapes and readability and how I can capture the correct atmosphere and the correct mood with correct value structure, right? Uh, any questions so far, guys? You guys are so polite and quiet. All right. I think we have a question in the chat. Oh. It's about uh, when you go out working plain air. Oh, okay. So Jeff had a question about the ambient glare. Yeah, I've been actually painting from my car most of the time. So I haven't had to deal with that too much. I sit in my car and I paint. It's quite comfortable. My boyfriend's super sweet. He'll just drive me. He'll sit next to me and read while I paint. So it's nice to have someone who knows the area. Uh, or I'll just sit by myself in the car. The one time though, I do have a funny story. The painting I actually just posted of the beach of Cuvier Park. I did that on heavy paint. I could not see my screen one bit. So it was almost a challenge for me. I was like just guessing. I could kind of see my values, but I couldn't really. You can paint in a black box. I know some people do that. I don't I don't know. I'm super lazy. So when it comes to like setup, I'm just like, I just want to sit. If I can find shade, I'll paint. If not, I'm just going to do the best I can. Do not take my advice for like studio equipment because I for most of the time until recently I was sitting on the ground painting for gouache or any bench I could find I never set up an easel because the time I set up an easel it like the light's gone uh, same with iPad I'll just sit on the ground I'll sit on a bench of course it's a lot easier and that's why it's a lot faster to whip your iPad out and be able to do 10 minute color studies right I've done it before where I did five paintings in like 20 minutes because the light was just changing so fast you just want to Bring, bring it in and heavy paint's really good for that. I will say if you ask me for a comparison between heavy paint and infinite painter, they're about the same, but I feel like I can get down a faster look, a faster color study with heavy paint because it's you're not dealing with so many tools. It's almost like you're not bogged down with the tools so that once you get over that threshold, you're like bam, 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 and you can create really quick color studies. Um, my iPad lasts pretty long. Um, not not super long, I would say. So, I mean, I can go out and do like four paintings and it'll be fine if it's fully charged, four or five. But I also just take like 20 minutes, 30 minutes max on a painting or maybe less. So I don't sit there for an hour to do one painting. They're usually really quick. Um, and I do have a charger in my car so that if it does run out of battery, you know, you can plug it in now and plug it in while you're painting, right? If you're painting, if you're painting your car. I don't really have a portable battery, but I'm sure you could do that. So, um, oh, thank you, Tia, to pinch, pinch with two fingers. Oh, on the iPad. I know on the iPad it is. I don't know how to do it on my desktop, Tia. Um, so on your iPad, you can't pinch. Yeah, because I was like, there has to be a way. Um, unfortunately, not here. Okay, I'll just keep the chat open here. Okay, so let's keep um, moving. Oops, wrong value. Okay, so... Did that make sense, Jeff? Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just trying to find some... That's me squinting. Um, I'm pretty much squinting all the time. 
I look mean because I'm squinting all the time. It's just like a second nature for me. When I'm painting larger paintings, I will, uh, I'll walk away from my painting. Or when I'm painting on my easel, studio paintings, um, I'll walk away probably every 20 seconds. And it's pretty cool because then you also get a workout. You're like walking back and forth. That's like little cardio for you, right? Um, I'm just trying to see how I can play with... Sometimes I close my eyes because I can visualize colors that way. People, students have told me like, you have a seventh sense for color. Like the colors you see, we don't see. And I'm like, it's just, I think the the easy answer is that you just plain air and you just practice from plain air and, and you start to see colors. I don't like that color combo. Um, that maybe you haven't previously explored. Um, Diane, I'll have to ask, um, I'll have to ask Vong. He might have a way he might have a way now, but uh, I'm I'm not sure. I'll ask him, and he, you know he's pretty fast at responding, and and then I'll tell you guys, right? Um, but what I do usually is that I'll just have preview open, or I'll be painting on my iPad, and then I'll have the picture open on my desktop, and then I'll just kind of look back and forth, right? Um, okay, maybe let's add some cows. Which I, which I didn't do before. Diane, are you excited to do some paintings on heavy paint? I think she's so excited. Okay. Are you intimidated right now? After working on this app, I decided to make all my students do heavy paint, uh, my digital students, because I just think it's a, actually even gua students, I just think it's such a great way. Those are my cows, by the way. So I'm, I'm really just going to be graphic here. Um, <laughs> she said yes. Um, okay. Again, I love, I, the other idea, what I love about heavy paint that other apps might not necessarily give you is that you can really work abstractly. So you're kind of challenging that different part of your brain where you're not thinking in terms of that's a bush, that's a house, that's a this. You're, you're thinking so abstractly in terms of how your shapes are existing in relationships with each other, how they're vibing against each other, that it becomes on that level where you're sort of unseeing what you know or unknowing what you know and trying to unsee what you see and approach it from a completely different standpoint, right? Um, and that's what I really enjoy. Um, and 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 uh, hold on. So here, I'm going to just push it a little bit warmer. Oops, wrong. Sorry, I wanted this, this fill tool. Um, too warm okay so I'm like even to saturate even more let's see if you can play with some neutral grays here um, I love paintings with neutral grays it's still too warm um, so I'm keeping desaturating this red quick color tip is that if you've mixed squash traditionally or any medium for that matter you find that if you desaturate the color it actually looks like it's complement and digital you have that too so right now if I desaturate uh, if I put a red, okay, and then I start, let's see if I'll work here, and I start desaturating it and maybe pushing it over maybe a little bit, it starts to have a little bit of green tint to it. If you really squint and see, this is not the best example, um, but I was doing some blending um, um, master studies on Photoshop and it blew my mind where if when I was putting down a desaturated darker red it was completely reading as green and it was blowing my mind um, because essentially in gouache I'm mixing neutral grays through complements right and that's how I that's how I think and so I'm squinting and I'm going okay I really like how those reds are slightly offsetting these greens that I have laid in already right and I'm essentially sort of fragmenting these shapes a little bit I think I need like a longer arm so I can just go like this or something. Okay. Um, this is how I'm going to paint, guys. I'm sitting like two feet away from my computer. I think this works better. Okay. Um, so if I look weird, that's why. Here. Can I ask a question? Huh? Can I ask a question? Yeah, of course. 
You don't need to ask. Um, how would you, because um, I remember the last painting you did, like you want to, when you step back, you want to show depth. How would you encounter depth in this part where your horizon line not looks flat and more in depth? Since that there's no layer, you just got to go right in. How would you encounter This that? horizon line down here? I um, guess I'm more towards the left side. It just like, it's just like flat. Like how would you make the, where it looks like more of an atmospheric? Value, that's it. Okay adjusting and getting your values right and maybe sometimes playing with edges just a little bit the number one question i get and you guys are getting the lucky answer i mean i've I'm probably answered in some form already people always ask me how do you get value and how do you or sorry how do you get mood and atmosphere it's not through color it's partly through color but if you don't have correct value it's not going to read as it's not going to read the full potential that you want it make sure your colors you're putting down have the correct value um, if this was too dark, okay, then maybe it would read as too close, right? Same with here. Maybe maybe if, you know, something here was too light or something, it would be pushed back too far, right? Um, so let me just play with the fill smudge tool a little bit, see? So it's really just a value. And I know that's not the funnest thing to study and to, and to get your head around. I once had a workshop student and she was like, I refuse to understand value. And I was like, well, that's too bad. You're not gonna get your paintings how you want them to completely. But she was a really cute elderly lady, so I couldn't be mad at her. Um, but it's literally, that's the short answer. Just to really understand how, turn it black and white. I think there's an option, oh, right here, ta-da. Okay, so now I can see where my values are. Oh, I love that. Now I can see where my values are grouping, where where I want it to, to have more contrast, which is where the barn is, and where I can bring some things out more, right? So that is your best friend. If you can't turn your painting black and white, I mean, sorry, if, if you can turn your painting black and white, um, because, because, you can see sometimes. Now, if you are so good, you can break the rules. There's artists that break the rules, like Soroya, Edgar Payne. Uh, Edgar Payne, a lot of his times, his skies are the same value as his mountain, but he uses color shifts to sort of draw your eye away from that. It's really cool. Who says you can't break the rules? But as but you can break the rules after you understand the fundamentals, right? Is my, is my sort of cal cal caviar i'm just adding some slightly cooler values there super subtle you see those super subtle color shifts i'm adding turn it black and white it's the same value as that green do you see that subtlety right there i'm all about the subtleties that's what i love i have some warms here if you see my cursor some blues and then the green i have as a base i'm just going to add it in select places maybe i want to push it slightly warmer here I keep doing the drag thing so i'm going to color pick here Oh, sometimes there's a bug. Okay, color pick. I'm going to shift it over here. Now I have to manually just see, maybe desaturate it a little bit more, just to add some slight warms there, right? I know I'm throwing a ton of info at you guys. I can't do a workshop without talking about color and everything. I end up like, I end up sharing way too much. Um, and probably overwhelming people, but you get, I guess you get the bang for your buck or whatever. Um, just because everything is in, in the end is super interrelated. You can't, you can't just sectionalize, um, you know, grouping is related to squint. Oops, that's wrong value. So that's like, I mean, I guess it could work, but it kind of stands out a little too much. So I'm going to control Z and I'm going to darken the value a little bit because your last bar is value. Maybe uh oh, what happened? Oh no, please don't tell me it froze. Um, and maybe just, but I don't like those strokes there. Okay, so I'm just gonna carve in again, taking the value there and adding a little bit of complexity there, but not too much, not too much to distract your eye. I could also use the circle tool just to get a little bit of variation and maybe the fill tool. So I mainly use the brushes to add different textures, um, different variation, okay. Um, I think right now I could add a little bit of warmth into my tree. So I'm going to bring the the greens to a warmer green. So this is a cooler green and you have a warmer green as you drag over to the warm colors, right? Warmer colors. And maybe what I want to do is I want to choose 
Hmm. Oh god, I think I have a bird nest outside my house. Do you guys hear those birds? You do? Oh my gosh, I think I have baby birds outside my house. Um, okay, so I'm just trying to imply just like the, the crests of the trees hitting the light, just a subtle, subtle light. But if I turn it black and white, I don't want it to be too huge in value. Difference um, here, I think I smudged it. So I need to bring back some of that shape. Oh, you know what? I have no jitter. Where's my jitter? I miss my jitter. Um, did I answer your question, Ashley? Okay, let's see here. I know you're probably wanting something more, but that's the, <laughs> that's the. No, you're good. You're good. Don't oh, worry. You're good. Thank you. Uh huh. I always like to add, um, not greens. Another thing that I see a lot of the time is that people will go haywire on greens, uh, in a bush, because it's green and they think that trees are green. I like to add like literally like purples. Sometimes if I can pull that off, of course judging that it's the right value. I always like to add play with different color temperatures and add, that's too dark. You see how that's too dark and it stands out like a sore thumb. So I'm like, okay, let's see, I need to lighten and then maybe try something like that and see how that feels. Um, why am I not getting so much jitter right now? It's, maybe it's a dark value, okay. Um, and again, I'm just putting on the, I don't know if they're working right now, um, the colors, because I wish I could zoom out. Uh, but just little hints, and you see how that can just bring alive some of that so much more. Maybe even here, I like to add really dark, desaturated, not super dark, but more of a desaturated warmth into some of the darker areas of the foliage. Um, and then maybe if the edges are too hard, oh, you know, this is a great way to, Sorry, let me just do something, smudge. Another great way to barely add that is the fill gradient tool, okay? So the fill gradient tool, I was on the smudge tool. Let's say you're like, I don't want it to be that harsh. You see this tool lets you have a blend, right? So here, now I can just add a little bit, right, of warmth and adjust that sort of more, uh, a softer edge I can also it's great for mountains okay so I discovered this when it's like you can actually create the impression of far away mountains just by dragging and having the edge sort of disappear a little bit now sometimes it looks like really graphic layers so the way you draw it in can sometimes matter I guess maybe I should connect and I have too much of a jitter so it's giving me some sort of purple and what I like to do is I kind of like to keep layering and layering until I find something maybe there. I don't like that though. Um, I think I like to empty there more. So I'm just gonna carve out the sky, carve out the mountain with the sky, maybe soften the edge here. Oh my God, I need to, oh my God. Okay, um, here, I just hit my bed. <laughs> um, here, you know, we can play with bringing the value into the sky a little bit just to incrementally lighten. Oops, too much. Um, and then here, I, I really need to work on designing that a little bit more and everywhere, but I'm just <laughs> picking <laughs> from mentally. I never work on one area at once. I'm always hopping back and forth. And that allows you to sort of um, build up the painting holistically, right? I'm trying to think of what brush to use best. Um, Hmm. Maybe this one. Okay. My weakness is uh, painting mountains and things that have more structure to them, which is really weird. So um, when I get confused by things like this, I have to like squint and dial back. I, I like organic things. Um, 
but I feel like for me, I personally really struggle with like finding pleasing shapes, or at least it takes me a while to do that. And when I do, it's quite exciting. Um, oops, I don't like that. Um, but it's, it's always like a, a definitely like a, 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 a process for me that I really enjoy. Uh, you can also use this as a draw tool, right? So I'm right on the fill tool right now, but I can almost use this, right? As almost like a drawing tool. You can see my cursor, I'm just going like this. And you can essentially create kind of thin lines like that, right? You can create grass like this, you know, pretty quickly, right? Very, very fast to fill in the shapes like that. Um, but I'm using that to now find find a rhythm and sort of maybe carve my shapes in a little bit more. Maybe bring in some of the greens here as well. So you see within my mountains now, I'm, I'm uh, really trying to play with all those um, sort of purples and blues more on the cooler scale, but within those colors, I have warm and cools, right? Um, and that's what I really love to get into. Um, that's what I start thinking about as I fine tune a painting after I blocked it in. Um, maybe now I wanna break in color pick here, break in some of the shapes here. Um, again, I have no method to this. I just sort of start making shapes and breaking it in and hope, almost like I'm hoping I'll find something. Mm. And maybe I might make it look like I'm making it easy, but I definitely struggle with every painting that I do almost. And that's a good thing because it means you're challenging yourself, right? You don't want to just paint things that you think are, are um, always in your comfort zone that you know you can do a good job on. I hated painting mountains before this. And then when I kept going to Lake Elsinore um, to visit my boyfriend there who lives there, I would just do a plein air while he would skydive did five plein airs a day and then I grew to love painting mountains and it only took a week. So sometimes you you have to condition yourself. Um, those are the times when you'll learn the most. And to me, if you looked at my Instagram post, I, I think painting starts with the mindset. It doesn't start with skill. You know, you guys can all come from different skills, different backgrounds, fine art, digital. If you have the mindset to learn, you'll probably be learn faster than someone who doesn't care. Um, as much. So uh, right now I'm just, I'm gonna go back here. Um, here as well. Uh, I should probably, I wanna actually push some warmer bushes here. I just wanna see and play around with sort of a desaturated red, which starts to carry on a green. Do you see that a little bit? It starts to carry on a little bit of a green. It's not super, red um and you know what i didn't think of before i should probably add some freaking bushes in the foreground just to create some pattern i don't know why i didn't think of that um that's another thing don't get too mirrored to your reference it's very easy to get locked in and think that you can't deviate it which is what happened to me right now and i didn't think of that happens to me a lot in planar too i get so um focused on doing something sometimes i forget that i can push so i've been challenging myself more lately to to take inspiration from the planner but then i'm also pushing at the same time those are supposed to be rooftops so i'm just and you can see the whole time i haven't even zoomed in i don't need to zoom in i think i'm fine um because it's just going to maybe that was too big in the end, I love the fill tool. Um, and I'll save the last few minutes to show you guys some, some paintings. Um, some heavy paint paintings, sorry. I was just thinking about the edges there and how I can. Hey, Tiffany, I have a, a question about um, color picking. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, and maybe an infinite painter as well. Uh, this one, it seems like the, the interface is pretty straightforward and with the, 
you know, with the value adjustment, that's actually pretty, pretty awesome too. Um, but on infant, is there any sort of, um, I guess, shortcut or um, is it always manual? Do you always have to, you know, click the spot and open that picker on infant? Or is there any like shortcut? I, um, yeah, I've always had the picker by me. I'm not sure there's any shortcut. Um, as I know, but um, I'm always working with the maker, so I can ask him um, if there, what do, what do you mean by shortcut? Like, is is there another version other well, than the I color wheel? I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I'm I'm new to digital, but um, like when I saw you uh, in, on your interview with Quam, and you sort of opened up. Um, I don't know if you were working in Photoshop. That was Photoshop, or, yeah. But uh, I mean, it you were moving so fast, it's just like. <laughs> Wow, and uh, uh, I just didn't know if color selection is always manual. Even though, you know you've got some shortcut for opacity and brush size, but is color selection all always manual? Um, yeah, I think pretty much it's always manual. I mean, unless you import certain colors, like a color palette that you want, you can color pick from those. Um, I mean, there are shortcuts in color picking the actual color, like you can color pick from existing colors. Um, that you have on your canvas already. Um, Do you ever sort of save colors in a palette as you're doing a painting or a series of paintings? And then I have done that before in Infinite Painter. I challenged myself to do a primary color painting digitally, something I've never done before. So remember when I showed you guys you can import reference photos and pin it? I just imported, I saved on Photoshop. I, I put yellow, blue, and red on a white canvas. I imported that as a reference photo, and then I just color picked from the reference photo those four colors, three colors plus white. Um, so I did a Soroya master copy based on that, and I can show you guys that. Um, but um, that's to the extent that I know it, and I don't have any set presets when I work on um, Photoshop too. Um, I'm just old school that way. I'm sure there's probably a way. I'm definitely more old school, whereas I the less tools for me, I don't mind working a little bit harder because sometimes tools just bog me down, which is why I've come to love this because it's actually, I've, I've come to appreciate the simplicity of it. Um, I don't even know if I answered your question. So uh, yeah, I think short I guess, answer is no, <laughs> sorry. Okay, well maybe, uh, maybe a in a different way, you know, when we're working with traditional say oil paint, um, you, you know, have your set colors. Yeah. I, yeah. I see what you mean. Uh, if we're working with a limited palette, you know, that it's, it's really just great to just do like say a hundred paintings to, to really get used to mixing color and getting right. right view. Is there, is there any exercises that you would recommend in terms of being able to get these slight color shifts, uh, other than just doing it manually? <laughs> nope. Just do it manually. I think that's the best way to learn, to be honest. Okay. You know, like for example, I'm. this is what I'm literally thinking. Here's a green, I color pick a green. I want slightly warmer. I'm gonna desaturate it. And look, that starts to feel uh, lighter, but also warmer, right? Yeah. I understand that concept behind it. If you traditionally paint, you probably understand it better than a digital painter, right? This yeah. feels warmer than this green. Um, same thing with blues, and that's literally how I work. I don't think there's any shortcut, like not that okay. I know of. Um, you know, and that's yeah. how I think you build up the most interesting color shifts, right? And in Photoshop, yeah, there's, 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 that could be a whole new demo. In Photoshop, you have adjustment layers. You can easily in two seconds just push the whole painting that your shadows warmer, your highlights warmer through uh, color balances. Okay. Um, and I cover that more in my, my mentorships because people who come, they want to learn more of those Photoshop. I, I work primarily in Photoshop and then I give heavy paint exercises as a planar exercise because I'm a big proponent of planar. But um, here in painting apps, it's not as intuitive as Photoshop. It was like Infinite Painter, you did see when I, at the end I adjusted the mask or the saturation and the vibration, vi vibrance. Um, I think there's, you can adjust the shadows and the warm and the, the highlights and the midtones, but um, in Photoshop, it's just still easier to um, to to get more in where you want it to be. Um, so every app is a little different, um, but in the end, I don't rely on those too much. Like I will just do those things at the very end, um, and three fourths of it, I'm picking colors manually because then I can really understand um, 
how I can how those colors work. If you want to get better, I would suggest um, doing master studies digitally, but not color picking and actually trying to see if you can match the color temperatures and the colors and the values without color picking. Um, that's what I did for a while to get better. Um, and then once you understand that, maybe you can, you know, if, you're, if your motive is to now, okay, I'm like, see, I'm pushing it warmer here. So I'm just pushing it to the warms, keeping it the same value. Okay, that's too, that's too saturated, desaturating a little bit. Maybe now putting that down there, seeing how that works right there, just in that specific aspect. I still think it's too warm. Maybe I'll take this color, but desaturate it to warm it up and find a balance in between these two. This is warmer slightly, has a little bit, and I'm also lightening, so I'm also desaturating it a little bit. It's a little bit less saturated than this, but it's vibrating now with those warmer patches I have, right? Um, and that's, that's how I build up a painting. Um, you know, sometimes I can keep some of these smudge brushes. Um, or smudge tools, but uh, all right, I thought I'd turn off. Sorry, I don't know who's calling me. Um, so, um, I'm just gonna add a few more things here. what happens you tell your family to not talk to you from 10 to 1 and then they call you and they're in the same house I don't know what's going on um, here maybe you can take this value push it a little bit lighter and just add some more in the back Ashley to answer your question about atmosphere right that's how I would start to start implying that it's all about value now those are pushed in the back a little bit more and maybe I can start grooving I feel a lot better now you feel a lot better now? Oh, I see a lot better oh, now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because you're adding, you're adding like that light brown to make it kind of look like there's more houses there. So if the yeah. farther out and the trees is lighter, so I see it too. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so the last 15 minutes, I wanted to, um, I think I'm just canoodling right now. Um, I, I would really need to, this is this is about when I would take a break and then I would not look at this for about an hour. I would go get lunch, I would go something, and I know when I come back, I'm gonna see things I wanna fix. Right now, I'm too close to it. So I, usually after an hour, I, I take a break. Like I'm probably like, actually I could turn these into hay. Maybe I'll turn that into hay or something. I don't know. I don't know how hay looks like. I've never seen hay. Um, but I don't know, maybe, Probably not because I don't know how hay looks like. I'll just leave this as a bush. Um, but this is about that time. Don't be afraid to get away from your painting. You know, like I said, the best, the easiest things to do is to step away. When you're feeling frustrated, when you're feeling stuck, you know, because when you're feeling frustrated, what is that thing? That was ugly. Okay. You know, you're probably start going to making rash, frustrated choices, you know, there's a difference between overworking your painting with passion, but then like being frustrated at your painting and then sometimes just putting down strokes and not knowing why. Sometimes you can push through, sometimes not. So, you know, be aware of where your mind is when you're painting because um, that can probably affect the strokes you put down and every stroke you put down affects your painting in a good or bad way, right? So maybe here, you know, I've added just a slightly lighter, maybe I'll add a pathway. You know, so, um, oops. maybe we can play with a shape like that, really broad shape, I don't know, changing up a little bit, just playing around, right? I don't know. <clears throat> that might not work, but maybe we can play with, uh, just playing with perspective a little bit. I don't like that, but I think I might play with something in terms of lines of just adding that a little bit and maybe despeckling and adding some bushes and maybe even adding um again some verticals to offset all the so i'm just adding now i don't want too dark of a value too light of a value because 
And notice I'm not going like this, like a straight line. I'm trying to actually taper it a little bit. Pretty much same thing how you would probably do with a gouache painting, right? Or whatever, traditional painting. Um, maybe add a little bit of a house there. Um, you know, I could probably work on adding more, more complexity. Oops here just some lines maybe maybe even um you know take this value here and break in a little bit in between there um and to me that's the most fascinating part of the painting where you're not really like detailing anything but somehow these shapes make your eye read it as something specific and that that to me is really fun about painting because um, I'm never really trying to detail. Sometimes you can smudge to just create that, oops, wrong one, um, the energy. Okay, so sometimes maybe I can, oops. I'm not too fan of the smudge tool. It, it works for me and sometimes doesn't. Sometimes it just brings in a little bit too much uh, other colors. Um, no, they don't really tool to soften to all, uh, any of the edges. Um, and, but what you can do is you can, there is the, the softest tool that I know is the, probably the airbrush tool. And it sounds like what it is. So let's say I took, I've actually never used this brush. So I don't, what? Oh no. Uh, what happened? Uh oh. Okay, so airbrush tool, depending on, it will basically give you kind of a speckled noise um, to sort of airbrush it. A little bit of texture maybe, barely noticeable. And I don't really know why. Maybe I have to make the brush bigger. Oh, now you can see it a little bit, right? So let's say I wanted to airbrush this a little bit, you know, down here. Don't really want to do that, so I'm gonna control Z because there's no layers. Um, you can do that. The fill gradient tool, you know, I, I really like that tool for mountains. And um, you can you can take the color you have already. So, I mean, Jeff, that's the closest thing that I will do. I will just take the color I have existing. And then therefore, I don't really have to think about new color. But this is great because now you can start getting, let's say I wanted to just get a subtle lightness in that cliff. That's a little too much but I can really get some nice subtle lightness. You see at the edge of cliffs there, and that can really make or break, you know, um, uh, you know, your, your thing. You can really define the curvature a little bit more, right? Um, so I like to use a fill gradient tool for that. Maybe if I wanted to soften the edge here, I could simulate it like that. Um, but to answer your question, Connie, the closest thing would be the smudge tool. And even that's not a super soft edge. Um, and and I don't think there's a super soft brush, um, to be honest. So I would have to ask him and, and, and see, play around. This app is constantly changing. So he's constantly adding new things. Like I think right now he's working on a layers beta version. Okay. It's $19 to get the full one Ooh. or you can get the free version. Um, which you cannot if unlock all the brushes without with with the non free version, but if you're a simple person, maybe you can make it work with the brushes that are come with the free version.